Hi, I'm Dave Spear, Director of Sales and Marketing for Lighting Analysts. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to discuss some of the very nice enhancements released in AGI 32 version 2.3. The first on the list, and for many the most important, is the addition of the new multi-core, multi-processor capable calculation engine with camera technology. If you're using AGI 32 on modern hardware with multiple processor cores, you can see some dramatic increases in calculation speed on all projects. Let's look at a couple of examples that were run on an Intel 5645 6-core processor medium workstation. The first is this small multi-level parking garage with 80 luminaires and roughly 4600 surfaces. Under the previous AGI 32 version 2.2 software, this model runs in 3 minutes 9 seconds. Using the new camera enabled version 2.3, it runs in 59 seconds. That's better than 3 times faster. As a second example, consider this exterior facade with four polygon dense trees included and a total of 16 luminaires. The trees are surface heavy, so the entire model is 23,205 surfaces. Using the new 2.3 software, AGI 32 breezes through the calculation in 1 minute 47 seconds. But going back to the old 2.2 version, AGI 32 labors for over 19 minutes. That is a little better than 10 times as fast. Does this send a message? You bet it does. Time is money, so get on board with AGI 32 version 2.3 and think about upgrading your hardware. The more cores or processors, the faster you go. The next feature I want to discuss is the new dynamic editing command for rooms and objects. This command allows the shape of rooms and objects to be adjusted by moving, adding, or subtracting sides or corners. Now when the project changes, or you make a mistake, it's easy to correct without recreating the entire shape. Let's take a look. So here's a simple room. What if I want to move this wall? I'll go up to the Room and Object Toolkit and select the new Dynamic Edit command. I'll snap to that center point, and now I can just drag that wall out or in any direction I like. Or how about if I just want to move a couple of corners? Let's grab that one. With ortho on, I can just slide it right up that way. Over here, I can slide it in. One more time. Very nice. How about if I need to put a little bump into this wall? Or is that a niche? Well, by holding down the shift key, I can set a node wherever it snaps to the center point. Hold down and set another node here. Then by releasing the shift key, I can now move these nodes. So I'll move that one up a little bit. Let's grab this one. Move up a little bit. Now I'll turn ortho off. Let's come over here, snap to the center point with the shift key down and set a node there. Release the shift key. Now I'm just going to drag that node down. Same thing over here. Shift on, set a node, shift off, drag the node. Pretty tricky, huh? But wait, there's actually more. Let's flip into an isometric view. Using our dynamic edit command, there's some limited things that we can do in 3D. If I hold down the control command, I can grab that corner and then shift to remove that node, and now I actually have sort of chopped off the corner of that room. Pretty neat. How about if I hold down the control key and grab this node and try to move it? Ah, uh, the software will tell you when you've outstepped your bounds and there's too many folds in the surfaces. If I release the control key, then I can move the side as usual. Let's go back to plan view. Let's look at mirroring an object. I'll grab that object. Is that a mirror line? Bingo. Let's come back and mirror window. Let's window both. This mirror line, and there we go. We can even mirror an entire room. Select the room, select the mirror line, and there we have it. What about drawing entities? Well, let's give it a shot. How about a little text? And maybe a few lines. Let's mirror a window. 
draw the mirror line and there's our mirror. So let's continue on with some more new features. What if you're working in a really busy file? This is kind of busy. Check out the new addition to the identify entity command. Back up here the old identify entity command. Well, let's come down here and select a line. Look, identifies it as a drawing entity, tells us what layer it's on, what project it's in, what status. We can turn the visibility off, we can delete it, we can transfer it to another project, lock or prevent modification, and all drawing entities on the same layer. So if we turn the visibility off, we're essentially turning the entire layer off. All we have to do is click the Take Action button. Well, let's go for it again. Identify Entity, let's grab that one. That's an object. What can we do with objects? Well, we can go to Surface Edit. We can turn it off, we can delete it, we can transfer it, or we can lock it. Go to Surface Edit, Take Action, up pops Surface Edit. So next, have you been longing for mouse wheel activity in render mode? Of course. Probably like me, you scroll that wheel without thinking and nothing happens. Well, alas, now it works. We can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. We can hold down the mouse button and pan. Or we can hold down the shift key and the mouse button and orbit. Well, I know that's going to ease my frustration, so maybe it will yours as well. Well, here's an enhancement to assist with your visualizations. Let's go up to the Rooms and Objects Toolkit, select a Room command, and click in the Color cell. Did you ever pick a color, say with a specific reflectance, maybe 50%, and say, gosh, that's just really not green enough? Well, now here we have the ability to pick additional colors of the same hue and similar reflectance. So I can click anywhere in this little bar down here and I can go really green at a 50% reflectance or maybe just kinda green. Or maybe back to kinda gray and maybe really kinda grayish green. All similar colors. I think that's going to be a big help. Alright, well dipping into the wish list jar Let's select the Luminaire Toolkit and let's locate a few Luminaires. We now have, under the Luminaire Labels command, a switch status. So we can tell whether a Luminaire is on or off. Let's turn the labels on. And now let's switch a few. There we have it. Luminaires on and off. Well, how about let's use the Luminaire Edit All command. We now have the ability to sort by column. So just clicking on the column heading, I can now see the luminaires that are off or on. This works obviously for every other column. You can sort by Z coordinates or orientations, tilts, aiming points, and so on. Also from the wish list, we have some improved performance for photometric webs, large point grids, and save and restore printer settings is something that a lot of people have been asking for. Not illustrated here. Finally, we are pleased to lend support to the new Model Lighting Ordinance, or MLO, by incorporating the specific calculation entities required and a compliance report, pass or fail, into the already present obtrusive light command in AGI 32. Let's have a quick look. So here's our tried and true Burger World sample file. I'm going to select the obtrusive light command from the calculations toolkit and the illuminance intensity subcommand. Let's rename this calculation MLO. We'll leave the point spacings at 10 by 10. And the MLO specifies an illuminance limit on vertical planes surrounding the property and above the property. The calculation methodology is then to place the site in a container or a box. The top of the box must be at least 10 meters or 33 feet above the tallest source. In our case, we have 27 foot mounting height here on this project in a couple of spots. And uh, so if we add 33 feet, we're at 60 feet. So let's put a Z coordinate top to the box of 60 feet. 
we're also going to select an enclosed box so that means we'll get points on the top we can disable the maximum luminance intensity in candelas because that's not part of the MLO that's part of CIE 150 and Aussie 4282 alright so let's click OK and now let's locate our box on the property line surrounding Burger World you can now see we have calculation grids on all four sides as well as the top and nice little light meter indicators now associated with the points that's also new the MLO states we must consider reflected light so we'll compute in full radiosity mode okay so for readability let's go into project manager select calculation points and let's turn off the visibility of the top segment as well as segments 1 and 2 there you can see our vertical illuminance on the walls at the property line the walls of the box so now that we have the calculations let's look at compliance so if we go back to the obtrusive light command we now can look at the compliance test report if we select the MLO from the menu and now select our lighting zone we're going to use an LZ4 high ambient zone downtown if you will we pull from the MLO an illuminance criteria of one and a half foot candles so that's the most that you can have on your vertical planes we can also look at our total off-site lumens we have a lumen allowance worksheet built into AGI 32 that is specific to the particular lighting zones so in this case we've built up lumen allowances for building entrances outdoor dining and a drive up window we get a whopping 48,625 extra lumens let's run the compliance test well immediately we can see we've exceeded our maximum allowable value of one and a half foot candles on all four sides the top of the box 1.2 we passed a list of all the specific points that failed and a summary of our lumen allowances we passed for total installed lumens but we failed for off-site lumens so obviously this particular project needs some adjustment there my friends go forth and limit light pollution so AGI 32 version 2.3 we keep expanding the boundaries of computerized lighting analysis thanks for your time